Hey there, it's Danielle Burnock from DanielleBurnock.com, that lady on the internet who loves you, connecting you to the love that heals so you can love yourself from survive to thrive. Have you ever been frustrated with yourself or just gotten really tired of working on yourself, wondering when am I ever going to get there? Or have you ever worked so hard on yourself and you've gotten there and you're just so happy and you think everything's going to be just fine and then you're not there anymore? <laughs> I feel you. I have been there. All those places. I was thinking about it today because I was working on the artwork for a new tattoo. I'm going to be getting a new tattoo. I have one on one shoulder. I'm going to be getting one on the other shoulder along with my daughter. I'm designing a butterfly. I had so many different ideas and I've changed my mind so many times. My daughter and I have been talking about doing this for four years, maybe. <laughs> I take tattoos seriously because they're permanent and they don't. I don't want them to come off and I don't want to get tired of them. Some people are very frivolous with them and that's fine, that's their body. My body, I take a little bit longer. So I've been designing this, thinking about it. I finally landed on wanting to do a butterfly. Then there's all these different kinds. And I have one and I was redesigning it and thinking about it and would I put a word underneath it and I was thinking about putting freedom under it, putting love under it, putting grace under it, putting emerging under it. And then I just got stuck in that word emerging. I thought about how I wrote in my book, Because You Matter, how frustrated I had been with myself because I had emerged with wings. I wear this necklace with wings. It's because of my book, Emerging with Wings. And the title of my first book is Emerging with Wings because I emerged, I was free, I was done, I got there, I got there. But then I discovered I wasn't there. <laughs> and if you've been through this, you know what I mean by these words that might sound cryptic to someone else going, what is she talking about? But if you've been through this cycle of working on yourself and getting somewhere and then feeling like you're not there anymore, you get me. Well, I get you. And I want to encourage you today. I was thinking about that. And because you matter, I talk about how a butterfly, when it emerges, it can't just fly away and how I thought it could and the whole process that it had to go through. But then you can think about after that process, see, now the butterfly flew away and now you're there <laughs> again. But life is a cycle of constant change. So I went back to my book, Emerging with Wings, because I had remembered I wrote about the process a caterpillar goes through. A caterpillar goes through a whole process to become a butterfly. And then when a butterfly emerges, it has to go through a whole process to be able to fly. And if it's a monarch, it goes through a whole process to migrate and replenish its whole generations so it's process after process after process. And that word emerging, it means becoming. Becoming. When I first heard it, I thought of emerging like out of, out of a hole or like someone jumps out of a cake or something and you came out and now you're out and so you're done. But that's not what it is. Emerging is becoming and we are constantly becoming. If we're growing, if we're learning, we're constantly becoming. And we go through the different cycles, what they look like. And when I did the one with the butterfly, what it has to go through, that fit my life then. But then we go through the times like the caterpillar of what the caterpillar had to do to become the butterfly. And so I wanted to read a little bit out of here of what that butterfly, what that caterpillar had to go through because I feel like I'm kind of there again. I talk about a book called Hope for the Flowers. That book was extremely helpful for me in my emerging from being bound by misery into inner healing. I love the book. It's by Trina Paulus. It's about two caterpillars looking for more. One gets tired and bored of all the eating part of being a caterpillar and tries to find more out of life. He asks other caterpillars, and, but they don't listen, not really not really knowing what he's doing and where he's going. He's not happy 
I've been there. Have you ever been there where you keep going and you're not happy, but you don't know why and you don't know where you're going, but you need more and you need change and you need to emerge into something? That's what this is going on here. He meets another caterpillar on this pile and they become friends. It's about their inner struggle to become, see that there's that word, becoming, become what they were designed to be even they, though they don't know what that is. I come on my podcast to tell you about embracing and becoming your inner God-given greatness, to grab a hold of your God-given greatness and to become that. But it is a constant thing. In this book about Hope for the Flowers, it's about the passion for freedom and the cost of change. It's about refusing to stay where you are when you know there is more, even if you don't know how to get there. It's about how true lasting change happens in that place of aloneness. It's a good read. Another thing I learned about the metamorphosis process of caterpillars to butterflies sounds a little gross. I remember learning this and it, it, it does sound gross, but sometimes when we go through change, we feel kind of gross because we don't understand ourselves. We feel confused and we don't know where we're going and we don't understand what's happening to us. But if we will trust the process and trust the God who loves us through that process, we can get to the other side. Continuing in the book here, the caterpillar once inside the cocoon releases enzymes that dissolve its tissues. It digests itself. It sounds really disgusting. It dissolves everything in a soup except for something called imaginal discs. These have been in the caterpillar all along. That's your God-given greatness. Wow. It's, the, it's what they need to become the various parts of the mature butterfly. The eyes, the wings, etc. Some caterpillars still carry, or some caterpillars even have tiny parts of the butterfly on them while they're still caterpillars, although they are not really visible. Once all the necessary parts are dissolved into this soup, the discs begin the cell division to form the butterfly. When the change is complete, some butterflies still carry parts of the caterpillar, muscles or sections of the nervous system. This was amazing. Even the seemingly black and white change of the butterfly has gray. Reminds me of my puzzle piece with identity and I am we. That's a different chapter in this book. I've gotten where I am today by refusing to stay where I was. Change is something I've done over and over again. When I got married, I vowed inwardly to not raise my kids how I had been raised. When I was told I would be sick for the rest of my life, I refused to accept that and pursued getting well. When my kids each asked me those pointed questions I talk about in this book, I sought the real answers. When the pursuer asked me to leave the familiar again, I entered a new unknown. When the pursuer said to me right after our return to Michigan, do not fear your nakedness, I am your covering, I knew there was more to come. I had no idea how much. Yesterday, I was facilitating a workshop, trauma-informed self-workshop. We had a wonderful time, great discussion. I love what I do, but I told them, if you would have told me 10 years ago I would have been doing that workshop, I would have told them they were nuts. I have been through so much emerging and change and it goes over and over and over again. I wanna encourage you, if you're tired of working on yourself, pause and rest and then get up again. But don't stop. One of the things I bring up in my workshop is about having patience with yourself. And I tell the story about a little kid who learns how to walk. Babies don't come out walking, right? They have to learn how to walk. All of a sudden, one day, the kid wants to walk, so he starts trying to get up, and he falls down, tries to get up, and falls down. Maybe he takes one step, and everyone's cheering and waving like, you know, they've just climbed Mount Everest. But they get up and fall down, and get up and fall down, and get up and fall down, and get up and fall down. They might even sit on the floor and cry for a while when they get frustrated. But I've never seen a little kid sit on the floor saying, I'm never walking, this thing does not work. Don't give up on yourself. Be like that little kid. If you have to sit and cry for a while because you're frustrated, go ahead. I have another episode on my podcast about bathroom flooring it and something else that's part of it. But that's what I mean by that. When you have to take that time 
to be frustrated, sit in that for a minute, but then get up again. There's more emerging to do, always, 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 always. If you haven't gotten a copy of my book, Emerging with Wings, get a copy and inspire yourself to emerge into whatever is your next part of your journey because it goes over and over and over again. Until next time, I love you.